Hi, Michael. Hi. This question is, uh, how can the aspirant renounce the mind if it is the mind? Right, okay. Um, rather than talking about the aspirant, because that's someone else, let's talk about ourselves. How can we, as mind, renounce this mind? We, we couldn't renounce this mind if this mind were what we actually are. We are able to renounce this mind because it is not what we actually are. But in order to renounce the mind, so long as we are aware of ourselves as I am this mind, we cannot renounce it. In order to renounce the mind, we need to know what we actually are. That is, we can give up what we are not, what we, what we mistake ourselves to be, only by knowing what we actually are. When we know what we actually are, when we are aware of ourselves as pure awareness, then we will give up uh, the mind or ego or, or whatever we call it. Um, so we, we, we can, it is possible for the mind to renounce the mind, so to speak, because when we turn our mind, our attention within to know what we actually are, once we know what we actually are, this mind will thereby be destroyed. Just like a, like a moth going near a candle, when it gets too close to the candle, it'll be burnt by the candle. Likewise, when we turn our attention within, if we, if we, uh, we have to be very careful, because if we turn it too much within, we're finished. <laughs> That's why none of us have yet succeeded in this, because we're not yet ready to <laughs> surrender ourselves. Because we know by turning our attention back towards ourselves, we are signing our death warrant. So we are not yet ready to let go completely. So we turn within to a certain extent and then we stop. We're not ready to go further because we, are not, we don't yet have sufficient love. When we have sufficient love, then only will we be willing to surrender ourselves completely. That is why Bhagavan said, Bhakti is the mother of jnana. It's only by, by when we have heart-melting love uh, but we will be willing to uh, surrender ourselves completely. But how to surrender ourselves completely, that is, com is very simple to explain. We, sur we can surrender us because we, we cannot surrender what we actually are, but we can surrender what we seem to be by, uh, simply by, um, by turning our attention within and knowing ourselves as we actually are, as soon as we know what we actually are, we cease to be what we seem to, I mean, we cease to mistake ourselves to be anything else. So but, but it, because the mind is not what we actually are, we, we as mind can renounce it. But as soon as we renounce it, we cease to be the mind that we that set about to renounce itself. Renounce is another way of saying surrender. We, 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 we start on the spiritual path with our aim is to surrender ourselves, to eradicate this ego. Uh, uh, it, but it's only as ego that we make effort on this path. But when we know what we actually are, ego is thereby destroyed. So it's not as ego, but we know what we actually are. And the, uh, <clears throat> that's where we need, of course, the practice, the preparation or the purification of the mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so on. So in a way, <clears throat> this is like uh, we have to do our part, which is the meditation, inquiry, yeah. to uh, go within, etc. But the, 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 we do our part until a, a certain point. And after that, we need like an extra push from grace or is it like a... We are grabbed by something else when we, we are it, ourselves. We, it's just yeah. In in a sense, yes, but in another sense, no, because the extra push from grace is always there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they just need the willingness, our willingness to let go. Uh, dualistically speaking, <laughs> yeah, yes. in a in a way. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, grace mm -hmm. is always drawing us. The, the, the nature of grace is to draw us back within. But we must be willing to uh, yield ourselves to that grace. And in, in talking about the in, in intellect again, uh, because we use the, the intellect part of the ego uh, to, to, to do manana and to gain some more uh, clear understanding. 
or is that uh, is that intellect, as you said, is a, I mean, that is part of the ego also. It's not part of the ego. The or is a, uh -huh. Intellect is a, a tool of the ego. The sure. ego identifies, intellect is one of the five sheaths. As ego, we experience all the five sheaths collectively as ourself. So when you, if we, when we, when we um, judge something, when we discriminate something, when we see something clearly, I see it clearly. But the, the intellect that enables us to see it clearly is, is an instrument. It is not what we actually are. None of the five, that, that, that is um, just, just like the body is not what we actually are, the prana is not what we actually are, the mind, all the thoughts, they're not what we actually are. Even the intellect, the ability to distinguish one thing from another, the ability to uh, see things clearly, even that is not what we actually are. That is a, a, even that is a covering. And an even subtler covering is the will. Even that is not what we actually are. I desire, but the desire is not me. But it's an aspect, let's say, and it's a sheath, no? So it's it something that we can sheath. put in yeah. service to, to realization. Yeah. I mean, exactly. It's not something that is, you can yeah. fool your, you can, of course, you can fool yourself uh, because... Yeah. We, no? we, we use it, we use it certainly, we use it certainly, but it is not, ego is not that. If we investigate to see what ego is, um, that, that is um, an old analogy about uh, uh, these five sheets. It's like peeling an onion. If you remove the layers, the layers, the layers, without the five sheets, there is no ego. But ego is not any of the five sheets. Ego is that I which says, I am this, uh, I desire, I, I reason, I uh, discriminate, I think, I remember, I perceive. Uh, I am alive. I am breathing. I I, I am sitting. I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm moving my hands or something. We, we we identify all these five sheets collectively as ourselves, but we are not any of these things because, as Bhagavan said, all these five sheets are jada. It's not our intellect is not seeing anything. Intellect is the is the instrument through which we are seeing. Yeah, that's why I said part of the ego, even though the language is not correct. <laughs> of yeah, course. Yeah. It's, difficult, it's difficult to put it into language, exactly. It, yeah. it, it is very important to understand that none of these five sheaths are what are, are, are ego. Ego is something that experiences all these five sheaths as itself, but it's actually, uh, it is not these five sheaths. But there are, in a way, when Bhagavan says that we'll definitely gain realization in the end, it's because this, uh, let's say that the ego is born, even though it's not born, uh, is born with a, uh, an element that it's, uh, it's going to provoke its failure sooner or later. I mean, even yeah. though it's hard, it's a long process and we have to gain understanding. And well, in the end, the elements of, uh, let's say, the intellect or... Uh, even the, uh, the experience after many experiences, many lives, and we, we get tired of them. Uh, the ego is born out, is born with the seed of uh, its own destruction. So yeah, to speak. yeah, yeah. The e the ego carries within itself the uh, the, uh, the seeds of its own destruction. The greatest blessing for ego is dissatisfaction. Dissatisfaction is the very nature of ego. As ego, we are never satisfied. So only after we've, we've sought happiness in every other possible way, when we finally give up hope of finding the, the perfect satisfaction that we're looking for anywhere outside ourselves, then only we are willing to look within. One, once someone asked Bhagavan, Bhagavan, though we read your teachings and though it's so convincing of everything you say, but happiness doesn't lie outside, happiness lies within. Why does the mind still go, continue going outwards? Bhagavan said, because you haven't had enough of it yet. But ultimately, we will all have had enough of it. We are, the very fact that we've come to this path means we are, we are tired of looking outwards. 
Okay, we still have some in the, the desires are still there, the bastions are still there pushing us outwards. But at the same time, we're tired. There's nothing in this life that really satisfies us. So we, we, however much we, uh, um, our desires push our, our mind outwards, we always return dissatisfied and a little bit more willing to turn within.